record. Yes, non-identical twins. Again, uh, I, uh, a, a reason uh, difficult to uh, explain. What is the reason? There is a probability of releasing uh, two eggs, or maybe three or four. But we're talking about uh, twins. So if the two eggs released, and the two eggs uh, now reach in the, uh, the middle of the fallopian tube, and they have enough uh, sperm cells, they are coming like a 50 million uh, uh, double of Sri Lankan population, the sperm cells, they are coming from this side, and they have enough sperm cells. So then uh, this one uh, fertilized separately, this one fertilized separately. After that, uh, this develop separately, this develops separately. And uh, with all our knowledge, during meiosis, it brings a lot of differences to the cells. Because uh, two sperm cells are different to each other, two egg cells are different to each other. So they are two different, uh, genetic, uh, genetically they are different. As a result, even uh, it can produce uh, one uh, male or one female uh, during the process of non-identical twins. Okay, uh, that's a little bit of background knowledge, uh, twins story. But the core knowledge is the shape of the egg cell, shape of the sperm cell, and the exact process of fertilization. So, uh, uh, actosomal reaction, uh, sonal pellucida uh, breakdown, uh, the cortical reaction, cortical gradual release the enzymes to uh, make it harder and the two nucleus fused and the two nucleus uh, bring uh, uh, the zygote, zygote develop into the embryo. Okay, that is the thing you had to remember of this lesson and uh, if you look at the notes uh, I think we have all this information until the uh, process of fertilization. There's a small lesson. Uh, this lesson is uh, basically uh, important for the in vitro fertilization. That is a uh, intracytoplasmic uh, sperm injection intracytoplasmic uh, sperm injection. So intracytoplasmic sperm injection is the process of in vitro fertilization. Uh, actually I, I just wanted to uh, get a video of this uh, in vitro fertilization. Uh, Let's see how far this video fit to our understanding of this intracytoplasmic sperm injection. Okay, basically it's like this. If you remember the unit one, uh, uh, when there is a genetic disorder and this genetic disorder is not considered during uh, early stage and then after that when they marry and then, then they have babies this stage is called uh, uh, prenatal stage prenatal stage uh, that is uh, inside the uterus stage they can do a two genetic test chorionic villus sampling and amniocentesis but they have an option before that if they already have a genetic background uh, which is not favorable, parents, uh, parents side, they can go for in vitro fertilization. And this is, uh, we learn as a pre-implantation genetic uh, diagnosis, 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 pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. So pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, uh, they collect the egg cells from the female and fertilize uh, outside that means inside the test tube that's why I call it in vitro not is happening in the body it's happening in the test tube uh, let's look this video if 
we can uh, get some information. So, uh, new share uh, production of sperm cell. So, I told you uh, when the sperm cell produced inside these uh, uh, tubules called seminiferous tubules of the testes. The seminiferous tubule has a special uh, layers of cells and these cells are very special. They can uh, multiply, they can increase their number by mitosis continuously. So it's, it's a sort of a never ending uh, cell division. So we can say it's never ending because uh, they continuously divide and increase the cell number. And uh, while they are doing this and maintaining the right cell number here and some of the cells uh, recruit to the next stage. So these cells mature into sperm cells. So if we try to uh, understand these, uh, these cells and these cells are called uh, undifferentiated cells. Why we call undifferentiated cells? These cells are not uh, specialized as a sperm cell. The sperm cell is called uh, differentiated cells or specialized cells because uh, it is specialized for one function and it can only uh, perform that function. So its function is the fertilization of egg cells. But these cells, uh, they don't have a, a very special function of the body. Instead, their function is a continuous division and increase the number, cell number. Right, then the uh, question is, uh, what decide the differentiation of this uh, to the sperm cell? What make uh, these cells to uh, differentiate into special cells? Right, uh, answer for this question is coming up next because it is uh, decided by the DNA. Now if you look the same story uh, for the fertilized egg cell, that is the zygote. Now if you look at the zygote, uh, it is dividing into two. Now initial stage, it is just dividing to make same kind of a cells. Zygote is divided into two and after that cell is dividing, dividing, dividing and increase the cell number. So this situation is again similar to this. So it's the same situation. And at one point, then uh, the embryo start to get a shape. Initially, it's a, it's a collection of a cell. But later on, they start to uh, change the shapes, differentiation takes place. So again, uh, what is the process of these changes? We can uh, still uh, explain very broad way. It is again uh, decided by the, it's a decision of the DNA. But so far we cannot explain everything. No one knows what is exact mechanism. It's only partly understand, we can understand the process. Now the, the scientists who uh, studied this kind of thing many years back, they had an idea that if these cells, especially zygote cells are dividing and they have a collection of cells and then uh, this collection of cells can uh, differentiate or change into a nerve cells, heart cells, uh, the liver cells, uh, cells in the brain, cells in the bone, like that. The, 
this kind of uh, changes if they understand well they thought they can use these cells to make any kind of a cells a further uh, going forward scientists might also thought if they could do in vitro fertilization why they can't make completely a baby uh, in an incubator so then uh, they do first stage in vitro fertilization and the complete process they are going to do inside uh, an incubator but if they want to do inside the incubator I mean uh, the basic way we can understand okay we provide oxygen we provide nutrition nutrition and we provide the right temperature so basic factors required to development of baby embryo then we provide inside the incubator and then uh, we can leave them until they develop the baby but I think uh, this kind of uh, interesting ideas are still under experiment we don't know a complete process what are the factors uh, required for these changes otherwise at this moment if they know in vitro fertilization scientists make a uh, incubators that can also develop uh, babies inside the incubator but there is a small version if the premature babies comes then they have incubators but early stage this yellow color line shows the differentiation a differentiation is uh, largely unknown it's very hard to think even why at this stage these things start to change but scientists uh, did not stop their thinking and their experiment. They started uh, to do a research on these cells. So these cells are called uh, stem cells. So we can def define stem cell. They are undifferentiated cells and they can give rise to other kind of cells. And also they can divide uh, indefinitely. So they can divide the unstoppable, they are dividing continuously, they are undifferentiated, but they can differentiate it into a right set. Okay, now uh, this uh, interesting uh, idea, they started uh, with this interesting idea, they started to experiment, research, uh, to find uh, stem cells. So they selected the embryonic stem cell. So embryonic stem cell is this. This is the embryo. So scientists uh, try to get this uh, embryo, embryonic stem cells, and they start research. Now if you ask question uh, how uh, they collect embryonic stem cell, one source is uh, if they do uh, embryo, uh, the in vitro fertilization, Okay, uh, cloning uh, is it same as this? <coughs> now, <coughs> a cloning. Uh, imagine uh, identical twins. So identical twins is a situation where naturally it make uh, two identical persons. So, we can say it is a kind of a cloning, but when it comes to cloning, uh, it is more manipulated process now. Right? Let's see uh, what is exactly cloning, right? Now, <clears throat> right, we take a, a cell. This cell has a complete uh, set of uh, chromosomes. Right, now uh, where we can get these cells, usually a human body, almost uh, all the cells are deployed except gametes. They are, they are deployed cells. They have full set of chromosomes, full set of information. Now cloning, uh, 
broad way, it is like this. They collect, uh, they collect uh, egg cell. Now this egg cell has n number of chromosomes. Right. So if we can uh, remove this uh, nucleus, if we can remove this nucleus, it's called enucleation. Okay, we remove the nucleus now. So when we remove this nucleus, this uh, nucleus going to insert into the egg cell. Now assume, uh, let's take a person. So this person uh, wants to make uh, another person like him. That means his clone. So he take uh, he takes his uh, one of the diploid cell, and then uh, insert this nucleus into female uh, egg cell. And then uh, this implanted, embedded uh, into the uterus. Then the, <coughs> this cell can develop. At the end, uh, again, uh, we can have a same person like this. I'm not sure about uh, whether this has been done in human, but this has been done in animals. It's successful they can make exactly the same uh, animals and they are again genetically identical. Now what is different in this situation? Uh, identical twins, it's a natural and they have a same uh, time period like they born uh, same time. But this case is different, that's a manipulated process and they can make a clone of a person who is a uh, existing or maybe not existing let's say a person died but still uh, we can get a live cells then still we can make a person like that uh, I think uh, this is uh, going to uh, going against the nature it is uh, it is un it is very unethical and we are dramatically changing the evolution as a result uh, legally this is bad human cloning is illegal process so but the question is how we can stop everything legally if somebody uh, misused the science and they can still uh, use the scientific knowledge for unnecessary things. So, talking about stem cells, the best option is they can collect some uh, in vitro fertilized embryonic cells because there are several egg cells have been collected and they separately fertilized and all uh, develop into small embryo and then uh, the most viable and most healthy one can be implanted and uh, rest of the thing either they can freeze in case of some uh, miscarriage or again they want to use it or maybe they can uh, use for research purpose but again uh, question is is this uh, legal is this ethical as far as I can understand, some countries they completely ban by legally use of uh, human embryonic stem cells. So they can't use uh, human, human embryonic stem cells. Because when uh, zygote, is make, uh, zygote is produced, after around three days, the zygote is coming to a certain stage like a several cell stages so that's uh, only three days this is called a uh, morula stage 
This stage is called a morula stage. And again, if we wait uh, another two, three days, like five, six days, this morula stage uh, again changing to different uh, shape. So now uh, we can see many cells and they have a special shape like this. So the cells are now located at one side and some of the cells located to another side and in between there is a, a cavity also called cyst and this stage is called a blastocyst. In blastocyst we can find some separation. The one cell mass stay here, the other cell mass is separated. And uh, this cell uh, trying to make embryo, this cell is trying to make a placenta. That's a connection between uh, mother and fetus, the placental structure. Now blastocyst stage, the placenta is again uh, kind of uh, differentiated the cells. So also called they are not embryonic, we can call extra embryonic, they are called extra embryonic. But here the morula stage, they are undifferentiated. So if you take a cell from this, we can make a, any kind of a cell. We can make, we can make, a, we can uh, differentiate into any kind of cell. I mean, theoretically, we can differentiate into any kind of cells, and they are called a totipotent stem cell. But here, a blastocyst stage, we can make a, any kind of cells. minus extra embryonic uh, tissues. Because it's already formed, these cells are already differentiated and sent to the one end and this embryo cannot make it again. So it's any kind of cells minus extra embryonic tissues. And the next stage and these cells are called a pluripotent stem cell. After that, uh, once a baby is born, or maybe an adult, if we can take the cells, uh, they are very limited. That means we cannot make uh, many different cells. They are specialized to make only one kind of a cells. You have seen, if we take cells from the testes, they can make only the sperm cell. If we can take the cells from the skin, it can make only skin cells. So these cells are called, uh, it's very limited, and they are called uh, totipotent, pluripotent, and okay, again, uh, we have to join for the next session we are ending to the session and they are called multipotent because they have a, a limited number of cells that means the they can make limited number of spe uh, special cells. Right now, uh, these are the 
three types of uh, stem cells and uh, we can also uh, classify them embryonic stem cell and adult stem cells. So when you say adult, uh, it is not only for this adult, it's also for babies, kids. Generally we can consider after birth adult stem cells and embryonic stem cells. Okay, then the question is, what is the use of the stem cell? Why uh, it is important for us 